I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper, and in this video I want to talk about Camping 101 classes. You know, a lot of organizations have recently offered Camping 101 classes. Uh, some of these include uh, retail stores that sell camping equipment. Uh, a lot of state parks are now offering Camping 101 classes and a, and a few uh, community colleges are also offering these classes. I have attended a few of these programs and have now formulated some opinions about what the objective, the organization, and the content of Camping 101 classes should be. Let me share this information with you. These Camping 101 classes should have two objectives. First, they should attempt to convince inexperienced tent campers that tent camping is a safe, comfortable, and economical way to travel around the country, to learn about nature, and to have fun. In order to achieve this objective, it will be necessary to address many common misconceptions. For example, many people believe that you must sleep on the cold, hard ground when you go camping. In reality, there are several ways that you can sleep very comfortably. In fact, I sleep more comfortably in my tent now than I do in my bed at home. Another misconception is that you cannot eat good tasting food when you're camping. In reality, we cook better meals in our campsite than we do in our home now. A third misconception is that camping is not safe, but in reality, camping in developed state and federal campgrounds is very safe. A second objective of Camping 101 classes should be to provide specific details that would allow participants to find the best tent that fits their family situation and their budget and to find other essential equipment that they would need in order to go camping as soon as possible. In order to convey the message that camping is a safe, comfortable, fun, and economical way to travel and vacation, it is desirable to employ mature adults who have experience camping in a variety of state and federal parks in a variety of states. Furthermore, it is desirable to employ adults that have had experience camping with children. While young adults may have energy, enthusiasm, and a little backpacking experience, they typically do not understand the many subtleties that are associated with tent camping in developed state and federal campgrounds. For example, they may waste considerable time talking about bears when squirrels and raccoons cause more problems for families camping in developed state and federal park campgrounds. Now let me explain how the Camping 101 classes should be organized. I believe they should be organized into five basic sections. These sections are historical background, destinations, equipment, procedures, and ethics. And now let me summarize some important points that should be made in each of those five sections. The historical background section of the class should introduce the writings of Nesmuk, T.H. Holden, Ernest Thompson Seton, W.D. Boyce, Horace Kephart, Henry Ford, and the Vagabonds, and several camping books written after World War II. When reviewing these historical documents, instructors should pay particular attention to writings that talked about how to enhance comfort while camping rather than roughing it or enduring discomfort. In this historical section, instructors should also give a brief review of how the small camping trailers of the early 1900s evolved into the giant Class A motorhomes and fifth wheels that are frequently seen in campgrounds today. 
In the destination section, instructors should clearly state to participants that while many campgrounds are safe and comfortable places to visit, a few are not, and new campers need to learn how to avoid unsafe campgrounds. To begin this discussion, instructors should explain the common differences between state park campgrounds, national forest campgrounds, national park service campgrounds, Army Corps of Engineers campgrounds, county park campgrounds, municipal park campgrounds, and private campgrounds. Before deciding to spend the night in any campground, new campers need to learn as much as possible about that campground and read anything that's written on the internet, including the park homepage and any reviews of the campground. As a general rule, large, popular state and federal campgrounds with more than 50 campsites are safe and comfortable places to camp. But small, unpopular, remote campgrounds can be dangerous places to camp. Inexperienced campers should investigate carefully and ignore books and websites that recommend small, remote, free, or low-cost campgrounds. County, municipal, and private campgrounds vary considerably in terms of their safety. Some of these campgrounds are nice, but a large number have become semi-permanent RV parks that attract a lot of people with a lot of problems. In this section, instructors should also talk about the importance of reserving campsites in advance and how to do so. In the equipment section, instructors should identify major equipment categories such as clothing, primary shelter, bedding, secondary shelter, and so forth. And within each major category, they should identify those items that are essential, those items that are desirable, those items that are optional, and those items that are unnecessary. These categories are summarized on the gear page of my website, www.basictentcamping.com. For essential items, instructors should identify good models and give their prices, their strengths, their limitations, and indicate where they can be purchased. Furthermore, instructors should avoid the concept of the 10 essentials because this concept was developed for mountaineers back in the 1930s and adapted for backpacking, but they really do not apply to basic tent camping and developed state and federal campgrounds. In the procedures section, instructors should briefly discuss several procedural topics such as planning campsite layout, setting up sleeping quarters, tying knots, rigging guy lines, finding firewood, splitting firewood, making fires, cooking meals, battening down for storms, preventing animal problems, and bathing. In the ethics section, instructors should begin by summarizing some of the problems that have been caused by park visitors in the past. Some of these problems include drunkenness, disorderly behavior, creating loud noises, cutting trees and other vegetation, killing animals, writing graffiti on historic buildings and scenic overlooks, damaging plants by driving over uh, the ground, driving nails into trees, throwing knives and tomahawks at trees, causing fire damage, and throwing litter on the ground. And then instructors should explain how campground rules and leave-no-trace guidelines are being used to try to reduce some of these common problems. 
When discussing the Leave No Trace guidelines, instructors should be sure to give examples that apply to front country campground camping rather than back country hiking and camping. In sum, I think Camping 101 classes should teach non-camping individuals that tent camping is a safe, comfortable, fun, and economical activity. And then these classes should provide the details that would allow participants to buy the equipment that they would need to start camping as soon as possible. For more information that could be included in this class, please see my book, Basic Tent Camping. Visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com, and visit my Facebook page, Modern Tent Camping. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping.